with the Pakistan state since she was young enough to remember. And she knew exactly what she wanted to do. She was going to play it the way her father did. After October 18th, she came back to this house, and she came back and saw us for just like two days. But we still were happy to see her because we got, we got to see her again, we got to hug her again. And she kept on telling us that life is in God's hands. If I die, it's God's choice. I beg her not to go back. It was just not an option for her not to go back. There was a problem that needed solving, and she was the only solution. Well, the best solution. I think she knew that there were risks. There were risks, of course, by going back, but I think she believed in the people. You know, it was one month before my 18th birthday, so I, um, I saw her the night before she was going to leave, and she said, you know, she said, I want to wish you happy birthday in advance, and I said, don't wish me in advance, wish me in January. And she said, you know, I'm wishing you now. And after she was gone, I, I found this necklace in her drawer. It said, happy 18th birthday. So I feel like she was prepared. She kept on telling me, happy birthday, happy birthday. I'm like, why are you telling me now? She's like, what do you want for your birthday? I said, I want you to come back. She's like, I'll try my best. I get up to speak, there's always a sense of anticipation. And there's also a bracing for what may come. I know my foes are waiting for me to slip. Don't know then who can be amongst them. There may be somebody there with a bullet. I think she felt very strongly because of her religion that you die when your time is um, that there was nothing really she could do to water that. So I think that gave her strength. As I get up, I feel the love of the crowd come towards, and I feel completely protected. <laughs> My nervousness drops, my apprehension drops. I no longer care for bullets because I feel in a crowd like this, no bullet can help hit me. I just feel invincible. In Sufi literature, the Sufi looks forward to death because the Sufi is really saying, I'm going to meet my beloved, the beloved being God. So there is no fear. There's only joy and there's only compassion. After the speech, I was in my thoughts, alone. And suddenly I felt that in this crowd, in this rush, I could feel the martyrs come with me. They're all walking together, and that it was not lonely. So I could almost feel, and it would make me feel lighter and lighter. And I really felt ele elevated, you know. I just felt myself rise almost inside me, my soul or my spirit. We were all in this house. We were, me and my brother were in that room over the, in the, my father's room back there. We were watching the TV. And all we knew is that something happened. And that's when you knew we had to go, no matter what. I said, arrange a plane. Well, somebody's arranging a plane. I come back here, and the television announces she's dead. We saw in the news, we saw how uh, everyone reacted.
um, on CNN it had a picture with um, the date of her birth in 2007. Um, so um, and my wife and I, uh, we cried. When they heard Ben the Senior died, lots of people came out angry onto the streets. And the slogan they were chanting in Urdu was Amrika ne kutta pala vardi wala vardi wala, which literally translated means America trained its dog, the one in uniform, the one in uniform. I went to my office and the press started calling a lot. And, um, then I realized the email. This past October, Budo sent an email to her longtime friend in Washington, her U.S. spokesman, Mark Siegel. Addressing the danger she faced in her homeland, Budo wrote these words, and let me quote them precisely. Nothing will, God willing, happen. Just wanted you to know, if it does, in addition to the names in my letter to Musharraf of October 16th, I would hold Musharraf responsible. It's the question, who will rid me of this turbulent politician? You ask the question, you don't give the order. He ordered them to wash away the crime scene. It's criminal. We have never had the right to ask questions. The government says she fractured her skull on the car's sunroof. But in the final photo, the explosion hasn't yet happened, and Miss Bhutto has already dropped inside her car. Her friends say the government's version is a lie. She was shot. The sniper moves in to within a few feet of Bhutto, who is greeting her supporters. He fires three shots. The last bang is that of the suicide bomber, blowing himself up. And at the site of the attack, a bullet found while we were there. Benazir Bhutto's supporters believe the government has something to hide. The anger, the unanswered questions, fueling Pakistan's instability. Martyrdom means standing up for justice against tyranny at all costs, prepared to sacrifice your life, your possessions, your family, everything, so as long as the principle of justice and of compassion are maintained. She was never interested in the moment. She was interested in the light at the end of the tunnel and history itself. When I get up to speak, I usually start slowly, and then I build up. I like to come up with arguments, and I talk of the contrast. I talk of what we did, the Pakistan we inherited. Then I come to how we built it up, and we built it up because we had your strength, your support, your confidence, the importance of the people in developing a society. I look at the people, because when I look at them, then I can feel that strength just run into my body. I feel strong, I feel more determined, and I feel that when I have this strength with me, then I can move any mountain. It just seemed to me as I looked out and just saw a sea of humanity, that to fight for the truth is important because the day does come when you see the response to your struggle.